this this is like a lot of content but at the same time it's just sort of it's so easy to summarize there is a man he is from texas he attended high school in kentucky there is a woman who also attended uh, high school in that area this person right here amanda who is um has been impersonated on the internet apparently for years uh in Riketa's local chat and on youtube uh there are videos of Riketa singing this person's name and going oh mandy oh mandy talking about how he would fuck the shit out of her how uh lady rackets would also let him would also fuck the shit out of her they might arrange a threesome he can't wait to go to anime mat siri because he wants to fuck the shit out of her just like continually talking about how much he loves mandy man he's always in this chat man he's always in the youtube chat he's just uh constantly engaged with this person who is not his wife um and who he only knows through discord and stuff and rigorously defends her and anytime anyone points out how her persona seems like a fake identity. Uh, she gets very defensive, and Riketa also gets very defensive. But she will never get on voice chat. She'll never talk to Riketa and defend defend herself. Uh, and it turns out that it's probably a guy who has been skinwalking this woman for years. Uh, there's a couple uh, way that this lines up. Um, his location, his high school lines up, uh, and then specific events in his... Uh, his life versus what Mandy talks about. So you can find obituaries for his family members that are dying at the exact day that Mandy is talking about losing other people in her family. Uh, so it all, oh, and then there's actual photos of the family members that match up. Um, so it really appears. Oh, and then the car, uh, Mandy talks, can, Mandy pretends to be like a car mechanic and continually talks about her super awesome car that her as a, you know, as a, as a cool tomboy, uh, car mechanic is, is super into vehicles, but obviously no fucking woman in the entire world gives a shit about a Lincoln 1984 town car. Um, and then uh, this guy also drives a, uh, a Lincoln, but it's like a 2004 town car or something. So it's like 20 years off. Um, but lines up with, uh, the wreck history and shit. So it's very in depth, and it's not in entirely interesting with details. So I will sum it up just as that: that people are pretty confident that this is Mandy, that it is a woman that this guy knows, um, and that he's been pretending to be for years. So that if anyone were to try and dox Mandy or cause her problems in relation to the Riketa stuff, uh, they would simply be inconveniencing this woman who has nothing to do with uh, this escapades. And presumably she, she hasn't thought about this guy in 20 years. Um, so she would not think it's him. Uh, so Riketa has not been having a good time dealing with this and having to, to come to the, the realization that this person who for a long time uh based on things that he said it's been um speculated that he had marital issues because of what he said about having uh sex with mandy um so the realization that he might have fucked up his relationship and his uh con let, to, to summarize that people think that he's already living away from them and has visitation with the kids out like an hour away or something every so often so the idea that he might have fucked up his life because of this catfish is pretty depressing. Uh, so he decides to go out to the hot tub and talk about Stephen Hawking being an inspiration because of how much poon he gets despite being a cripple and being married. What God did to Stephen Hawking, he put him in his fucking place. I do think Stephen Hawking is a bit of an inspirational story. Because if that crippled piece of fucking electronic rejects can manage to cheat on his spouse who knew him when he could walk, Get a new nurse for a wife while having a dick made out of an old Atari joystick. Like, everybody should be able to find someone, I would think. Maybe she just liked the paycheck. I'm not sure. Hawking was a genius, though. Yeah, why couldn't he figure out how to stand up or open his mouth? So smart. Maybe she liked his wheels. She didn't want to walk to the bathroom. 
Stephen Hawking was faking. Stephen Hawking was just the first weekend at Bernie's. They're like, oh, he has this disease. Like, no, he's just dead. Put him in that chair and have the, you know. They just have a text-to-speech uh, donation chat for Hawking stuff. They just crowdsourced it from physics students at Cambridge. Were you talking about Hawking wanking to midgets mathematics? No, but that's funny. He didn't wank it. Like, he had to have his nerds do it, right? She had to be there. I used to make fun of Hawking in the Dick Show Facebook group because someone was always like, he's a genius. He had two doctorates. I'm like, so? And lots of people have way more than two doctorates. Oh, I was, uh, Stephen Hawking wrote this article. It was an opinion piece about human social interaction. And it was the most fucking offensive, not words, but notion ever that Stephen goddamn Hawking would be the guy to write a piece about human social interactions. Because one, not only is he a failed technic set, right? But two, he's also a rich, elite, overeducated academic who's regarded uh, as this super genius with insight into everything. This motherfucker wouldn't know human interaction if it put his dick in his broken mouth. And so I fucking hate like that that, that he that he got to write that article and people listen to it. Of course he can write it with his speaking spell, but people listen to it and it's like, what the hell is this? Why would you listen to this guy? Who has this guy interacted? And it, and it was more appropriately, it was on modern human interaction. So you, you can't even say while well, he was leaning on his prior experience because that was decades before. This dude is sitting there writing about the change in human interactivity. He's like, brother, you live in a literal ivy tower, except you need a fucking handicap lift to go anywhere in it. That always just bothered me. So then I started making fun of it, and people got so mad that I made fun of their little fucking Hot Wheels. Uh, so I made fun of him more forever. Now I hate him. I memed myself into hating Stephen Hawking. That's a really weird tangent. That entire thing, I, I can, I can never follow. What did I cancel up next? I'm doing a live <laughs> next video is offensive. I'm clicking that. Fuck you. I hope someone has to look at that now. Um, the uh, I'll never understand. Or he can't understand what he what he says anymore. Just like his his ability to sequence thoughts one into the other is just fucking nonsense. And how do you develop a hatred of Stephen Hawking? I mean, I can understand hating Stephen Hawking because he's like paying underage girls to gyrate on him. That I can understand. Being a Jeffrey Epstein client, I can understand. But Jeffrey Epstein, um, or Stephen Hawking, is being outed as being on Epstein's client list. And the first thing he does is go out and talk about what an inspiration he is. Such a contrary, uh, he's, he's fucking lost. It. Just lost his mind. He finds he can, he cannot find a single dipshit thing. Not worth saying about anyone or any, any time. It's really crazy. Um, did I mention, did I even mention the sober spring thing? I might've mentioned it during super chats or something last stream. I did because I was talking about Rakeda and how my predictions for him getting better uh, completely and totally fell apart. Um, but I'll reiterate that he um, he made a declaration that he was going to not drink on stream in 2020 for, which is the year that we're in now, not 2020. That was, that was quite some time ago. Um, and he's, he's already re like reneged on this. He, he put out a series of tweets about how uh, he he realized that life is about enjoying the moment. And then someone asked him, so is this your way of backtracking the sober January thing? And he's like, yeah, he just said, yes, that's, that's what I'm saying. So this is the video uh, clip about it. I've actually not listened to this prior. So this will be a first listen. Uh, who said anything about sobriety? One of my friends does something that I'm actually going to try out. Uh, my friend Cecil, he, he does he does a month. It's early in the year. It's either January or February where he doesn't drink. This is out of order. Uh, he, I think that what happens is that he, yeah, he, um, he says, well, who said anything about sobriety? And this is her injecting where he mentioned sobriety. Um, and so I'm going to. I'm going to do the, uh, the sober January because it's like the uh, New Year's resolution, right? I'm doing sober streams for January. We'll see what happens after that, but oh my God. Everybody, uh, again, 
this is fun thing on the internet where everybody claims to know everything because they see a small portion of life. But uh, it's good. I don't know. It doesn't matter. So are you sober all the time for January or just for streams? Well, uh, again, <laughs> um, sober streams, uh, but people miss something. I don't generally drink off stream unless it's a social event. I just don't drink a ton. Um, people think because I drink on streams that I'm drinking all the time. That's really not the thing, but whatever. So uh, sober streams, because I didn't like how I was utilizing liquor as a crutch more than a gimmick on the show. And uh, it's, you know, I didn't like how it was affecting the show in that way. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of reasons for it. But um, when you give yourself an excuse to let an activity get out of control, you should get it under, you should get it under control. So sober streams for January, focusing on delivering content rather than relying on an altered state is my, uh, that's my goal. We'll see how that goes. If it, uh, if it's good and should be maintained, then it'll keep going. Or um, if it uh, is bad and isn't useful, uh, maybe bring the liquor back. Who knows? We'll, we'll figure it out at some point. Uh, don't know. Don't know how it will go. With that, uh, Tim Cass says, are you an alcoholic? Well, no, I don't think so. <laughs> you said the same thing when you stopped doing the Friday shit show panels too. Well, I don't. It's just crazy because like the whole point was that he complained. He complained. He went out and he complained that he was being accused of being alcohol dependent. And with an al accusation like that, he believed that there was no way to defend himself from from those accusations how do you how do you shake that that um the reputation of being dependent on something because if you say no i'm not you just sound like you're coping like an alcoholic would and then someone presumably people in his audience suggested hey why don't you just go sober for a little bit and he thought sure of course i can do that i can do that for january and now he's like pretending that 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 he forgot what the purpose of doing that was just to show people yeah of course i can stop drinking i can do my streams as i do uh, without any alcohol and i'll do it for an entire month just to really drive the point home that it's not something that i need in my life and now as he approaches the new year he goes out and he says well life is actually too short to spend an entire month doing something you don't want to do so uh bottoms up and he just is going to pretend that there was no point to the commitment to begin with <laughs> Crazy. Do Friday shit show panels, do I? But yeah, it's just, again, it's a decision I made uh, based on how um, certain shows went involving. He didn't do it. He didn't not make a week. He didn't do it at all. He, he committed to doing a sober January and then backed out of that commitment before the New Year's happened. He changed his mind before it even began. He has not been sober for more than a few hours at a time uh he hasn't been sober for more than uh one nap at a time um in all of 2024 thus far talked about cutting back on the drinking when you did stop the friday shows yeah i did uh and i didn't do it very well like i said it is what it is uh people will always make their assumptions about like uh what your life is like but you can't do anything about it <laughs> <laughs> you can't fucking change. You can never change anybody's mind. Like they have decided um, what your life is and, and what it will be. So you just, uh, you just let it go and do your shit. You look way better sober. Best of luck. Oh, thanks. I don't think I look different. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's fine. It's a weird, uh, weird life. It's a weird life, but it's it's all good, man. Um, I've had such a great end of December that I really can't be fucking mad about anything. Uh, we'll see what 2024 has in store, but I'm I'm enjoying it so far. Um, I don't know. Life has a strange way of approaching uh, approaching you and developing in ways that are unexpected and interesting. And I don't know. I'm here for it. There's not much you can do about most things, so you just kind of ride with it. Life is like a plastic bag. Some days you're floating in the wind, helpless to every 
desire and momentary whim of life as a flow. And then one day you wake up naked in bed next to your doctor's best friend. And you are shot dead in the back of the head by a closeted gay Nazi. You just can't be helped. There's nothing you can do. Might as well just drink. <laughs> oh, poor Akita. He, he's like, he's got this learned helplessness about how he perceives things. Or it's just like, well, there's no point trying to do anything because we're, uh, we're fucked anyways. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofer. Remember to like and subscribe.